Within the realm of football management, Pep Guardiola stands as one of the best to ever do it. Of the three most successful managers in football history, he's the one that stands out, already achieving so much success at a much younger age than his contemporaries. Guardiola's unparalleled genius has redefined the sport, pushing its boundaries while being on pace to become the most successful manager of all time and in just a few days might become the first manager to ever win the treble with two different clubs. So let's look at how Guardiola has cemented his status as one of the greatest managers of all time doing things that no other has ever done. Pep Guardiola's journey began as a player who spent over 15 years with Barcelona, where he was raising their youth ranks all the way up until he blossomed as a midfielder. The legendary Johan Cruyff became Guardiola's mentor as he himself recognized Guardiola's tactical genius, even being a part of his famous dream team. It was under Cruyff's teachings that Guardiola would revolutionize the principles of possession-based football, which would become known as Tiki Taka. Pep Guardiola still manages to continue to make history, with a chance to bring Manchester City their first ever Champions League trophy and become the first manager to ever win a treble with two different clubs. And with today's sponsor, NordVPN, you can make sure that you're able to watch the Champions League final safely no matter where you are in the world. With NordVPN, you can change your location to anywhere in the world with their global servers and access the internet as if you were actually there. This gives you access to geographically restricted content like specific Netflix movies and TV shows, various different websites, and even for watching live sports like football. Nord makes it easy to access content from any part of the world. They're also the fastest VPN on the market, so you'll never have to worry about long buffer times or lags. Plus, Nord keeps your IP address and other sensitive information safe wherever you are. So no matter how you're watching the match, make sure to use NordVPN to stay safe as well. So go to nordvpn.com slash Raymar or use my promo code to get four months of subscription for absolutely free. A big thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. But anyways, after retiring from playing, Guardiola embarked on a managerial odyssey that would redefine the modern game. His first taste of success came at Barcelona B, where he instilled the same principles to his players that he himself absorbed during his career. It was an extraordinary display of tactical ability and player management skills that caught the attention of the Barcelona front office. Then in 2008, Guardiola was appointed as the first team manager of Barcelona, inheriting an underperforming and unmotivated squad that had just won the Champions League title not too long ago under Frank Rijkaard. However, his influence was almost instant. Guardiola ushered in an era of unprecedented success, leading the Blaugrana to a ton of silverware. Under his guidance, Barcelona became a footballing juggernaut. Dominating and conquering the domestic, Lona came in 2009 when he guided the club to an unprecedented treble securing the La Liga, Copa del Rey, and Champions League title. The first time that any Spanish squad has ever won a treble. Then from 2010 to the end of the 2010-2011 season, Pep Guardiola would win an insane six trophies in a single calendar year. With his 2010 and 2011 Barcelona squad nearly winning every possible trophy there was. With the Champions League title, league title, and Spanish Super Cup title, just barely missing out on the Copa del Rey. Truly an even scary your squad than that of their treble winning squad, completing yet another unbelievably remarkable season under Guardiola's guidance. In his final year with Barcelona during the 2011-2012 season, Guardiola ensured that his tenure ended on a high note. And while Real Madrid did take the league title from them and put their reign of terror to an end, throughout his time at Barcelona, Guardiola revolutionized the club's playing style. He implemented a possession-based approach, emphasizing intricate passing, intelligent movement, and relentless pressing. So when you look back to the late 2000s and early 2010s, and remember how Spanish Tiki Taka just dominated world football, sure, Xavi and Iniesta are a huge factor. But don't forget that it was Pep Guardiola who put it all together. After departing Barcelona, Pep Guardiola would be on his way to Bayern Munich. And in fact, just the previous season had won every single piece of silverware there was to win. But under Guardiola's management, would continue on to build on their dynasty. In his first season, Guardiola would lead Bayern to secure the Bundesliga title in record-breaking fashion, becoming the earliest champions in league history. They would also win the domestic double with the German Cup trophy. 
However, in his second season, Guardiola only managed a league title with Bayern Munich, which was his most disappointing for the club. And some criticisms in the media and by fans would suggest that Guardiola wouldn't be in Germany for much longer. However, in his final 2014-15 season with Bayern, he would help them win his third Bundesliga title and second domestic double with another German Cup trophy. But despite the domestic triumphs, Guardiola's tenure at Bayern was marked ultimately with disappointment. While he was having a legendary uprising at Barca, many were starting to call him overrated and a fraud in Germany. For a team of Bayern's caliber with a star-studded squad that boasted exceptional talent, there were definitely high expectations of conquering Europe. Additionally, people were also saying that Guardiola seemed to be shaky as manager. His team selections and tactics were always changing, especially in decisive moments in European competition. Critics would point out instances where he made surprising substitutions or even alter the team's formation, something that was very unusual for Pep, who always maintained the same philosophy. And so the Pep Guardiola hype died down considerably. And this brings us to probably the lowest point of Pep Guardiola's career. In the 2016-2017 season, Pep Guardiola would take charge of Manchester City. But when he first arrived, there were doubts lingering in the air. The question on everyone's mind was whether Guardiola could recapture that magic and restore his reputation as a young managerial prodigy. But in his first season with Man City, Guardiola faced a steep learning curve. The Premier League was much more physically intense, a lot different from the leagues he previously managed in. The team struggled to adapt to Guardiola's demanding tactics, and Man City would end the season empty-handed failing to secure any silverware. The most disappointing season of his career not having won a single piece of silverware and only finishing third fueled Guardiola's determination to rebuild and reshape the squad. He addressed defensive shortcomings by bolstering the squad with key signings, improving the team's balance and their overall chemistry. Guardiola's attention to detail became evident as he drilled in his players' heads his intricate passing and positional play philosophy. Then in the 2017-2018 season, Guardiola's Man City came roaring back, looking completely unrecognizable and turning into a relentless winning machine. They dominated the Premier League with their attacking play, breaking records left and right. Guardiola's meticulous planning and tactics were on full display as Man City won the league title with a record-breaking 100 points, just completely dominating the competition. Then the following 2018-2019 season, Manchester City became full-on juggernauts. They would successfully defend the Premier League title, fending off a fierce challenge from Liverpool in a gripping title race. As Man City's possession-based style continued to break records in the Premier League, winning the Premier League, FA Cup, and a League Cup along the way. A testament to Guardiola's winning mentality and finally giving him back the hype that he had once lost. But despite the success, there was one lingering criticism. Pep Guardiola had never been able to win the Champions League without Barcelona. Despite his great Bayern squad and a Man City that had millions and millions to spend to get whatever player they wanted, he could never seem to win it again. In the 2019-2020 season, their journey was cut short as they were defeated by Lyon in the semifinals by a surprising upset, only managing to win the FA Cup and the English League Cup. Then in the 2020-2021 season, after winning the EFL Cup and the Premier League title, Man City made it all the way to the Champions League final against Chelsea. But as luck would have it, would lose 1-0 and thus fail again for another season. Then came the 2021-22 season. They were so close to making it back to the final until a miraculous Real Madrid comeback had cut them just short yet again. And thus, the narrative around Pep Guardiola and Man City had always been that they will never win a Champions League title. But fast forward to this 2022-23 season, it seems like Pep Guardiola is finally putting all the missing pieces together. His commitment to possession-based play is truly paying off as Manchester City has been nothing short of dominant this season. And this philosophy not only creates a foundation for attacking, but also works as a defensive shield, limiting the opposition's opportunities to counterattack. And Guardiola's player management skills are truly unparalleled. The way he's built this team, especially around Erling Haaland, has been insane. And Pep really does have the ability to connect with his players on a profound level. And after just securing the FA Cup and a Premier League title, Pep Guardiola and Manchester City have once again made it to the Champions League final. 
and if Pep Guardiola can pull it off, he'll be bringing Manchester City their very first Champions League title, as well as becoming the first manager to ever win the treble with two different clubs. Finally, silencing the criticisms that he can't win without Barcelona, and elevating him even further for his case as the greatest manager of all time. Honestly, in my opinion, I think they just might finally do it. Credit to Inter Milan, they've been amazing this season. But hey, if I'm ever wrong, make sure to come back to this video and laugh at me in the comments. But at the same time, we should give Pep Guardiola some credit. Even if he won't win the Champions League title this season, it definitely won't be the last time he'll get to the final. And he'll just continue winning more and more silverware with Man City, and eventually even catch up to the great Sir Alex Ferguson, as he has about a decade head start to catch up. Where do you rank him in the top 5 managers of all time? 